All right, so next up we're talking about our lab C. So this is a worksheet lab. So when we updated the lab manual, I believe we put lab C in there. Oops, hold on, let me get back to, sorry, I'm not sharing properly. There we go. So when we um, updated our lab manual, I believe we put lab C in there. However, if um, it's not in your lab packet on our Canvas site um, under the labs link, then you will find lab C. So either print it out from Canvas, write it on another piece of paper, or you have it from your lab manual. Um, so I want to go over kind of what to do for each part. So a lot of this is stuff we've done before, but we did it quite a while ago. So first off, for each aqueous solution, you're identifying the ions that exist and their respective concentrations. So this is actually similar to what we did today when we were looking at our electrolytes. So what I would like you to do here is you're going to write out your chemical reaction. They tell you what the molarity of the original compound is, and then you're going to tell me what is the molarity of each individual ion. So because we had one calcium, we have the same molarity for calcium chloride and calcium, but because we have two of the chlorides, we have twice as much chloride as we did for original compound. Okay, so it looks like Tosso is saying you don't see it in the lab book, so then go ahead and print it out off of Canvas. Looks like it didn't make its way into the new packet. And for those of you who don't have um, printing, just write it on another piece of paper. That's perfectly fine. All right, so any questions on number one here about what you're going to do for each of these three compounds? And just as a reminder, if you're breaking something up like HNO3, and let me put it right up here, polyatomic ions stay together. So it's H plus plus NO3 minus. Don't try to break up the nitrate. Any questions on number one there? All right, so number two, here you've got 10 milliliters of ethanol and you're dissolving it in sufficient water to produce 100 milliliters of solution. And you've, you're given the density of pure ethanol and the density of the ethanol water mixture. And now you're gonna convert the concentration into all of these. And so what I've written out here on the side is what you need for each one. So for example, for volume percent, you need the milliliters of ethanol divided by the total milliliters times 100. For the mass percent, it's going to be grams over total grams and so on. Where students get stuck a lot of times is part C. So when you're trying to find the total moles, you need to separate the ethanol and the water and find the moles individually and then add them up. You can't just take the total volume and use the density of the mixture because we don't have a 50-50 mixture. So any questions about this part C, especially this bottom part right here, where you have to find, oops, you have to find these two moles separately and then add them together to get that total moles? All right, so then you have your molarity and then finally your molality. So this is a great chance to practice that molality that we did um, today. So any questions on one or two here? All right, so part three says describe in detail how you would make 750 milliliters of a 0 0.100 molar calcium chloride solution and here what I want you to do is give the experimental steps and the number of grams needed. So I want you to pretend like you are writing the lab manual or you are helping somebody in lab who never was not fortunate enough to take Chem 1A and they said, hey, how do I make this solution? So you're going to tell them how many grams to weigh out, describe how they're going to weigh it. They're going to hit that tear button. They're going to scoop it onto something, never straight onto the balance on the glassware. So you're going to explain in the same detail that you would want if you were doing a lab, you're gonna explain that as if you're writing it for someone else. Next up, oh, I'm sorry, any questions on number three there? All right, so next up is number four. 
So it says, explain why this experimental procedure is incorrect. So take one liter of one molar NaCl solution, or I'm sorry, to make one liter of one molar NaCl solution, I will dissolve 58.5 grams of sodium chloride into one liter of water. So this is the correct number of grams here, and it's the correct total volume, but that is not the right procedure. And we want to give you an idea of why. Sorry, my cat, after she uses her litter box, likes to scratch at the walls, but I have a um, sliding door that is a mirror, so she is currently scratching up the mirror. <laughs> All right. So here is number four. And so here's what they're describing. They are describing you add the solid and then you add one liter of water. And this is the way, and I know we didn't get a chance to do it in class, but this is the way we would have done it. You would have added your solid and then you would have filled your water to the correct line. So why is the top part wrong? What's wrong with that top part? If you were to add the correct amount of solid and the correct amount of, of water, why not just just mix them together in a beaker and be done with it? What's wrong there? Any thoughts? Splash. <laughs> Good splash. I guess it's tough because we didn't actually get a chance to do the lab. So we need a total of one liter, and this solid at the bottom has its own volume. So if you measure out one liter and you add it to a bunch of solid, you now have more than one liter. Does that make sense why that top that top part would be the wrong way because you would end up with too much volume. Let me rephrase. Any questions about that top part? Why it's wrong to add the one liter on top of the solid? I know it's been a tough semester without having the lab. I apologize. Okay, but that's what they're asking here. So if you need a total of one liter, you cannot ignore the volume of your solid. Especially this solid. This solid is 58.5 grams. That is a large amount of solid, and it will have its own volume. Okay, any questions on anything we've talked about so far? One, two, three, or four? All right, so number five says, how many grams of beryllium chloride would you need to make 120, um, to add to 125 milliliters of water to make a 0 0.050 molal solution? That's our molality. And you're gonna assume the density of water is one gram per milliliter. All right, so for number five, our molal is the same as our molality, which is moles over kilograms. Beryllium chloride will be our solute Water will be the solvent. And there's one thing we didn't talk about, but molality can be broken up just like molarity can. So for this one, you're going to want to break this up into a conversion factor and have 0 0.05 moles of beryllium chloride divided by one kilogram of water. So those are my hints for this lab uh, C, and I'll be posting all of these lab notes on uh, Canvas. But any questions on anything we've talked about today? All right, I already miss you all. This was our very last lecture. But any questions on anything for me? Okay, so before I let you go, let's just go back over what, um, what we have coming up. All right, so Monday's a holiday and on Wednesday we have our exam. So just like always, um, we're gonna start at five o'clock. You're welcome to join me on Zoom, but you do not have to. I'll also be monitoring my emails. Um, on the day of the exam, homework's due, but I will post the answer keys up this weekend by Friday, um, just so that you have 
um, some time with them. Remember, we do have a quiz coming up, and I'll send everybody an email as a reminder. I've extended it through Saturday, so those of you who are um, those of you who are working Thursday and Friday, you don't have to try to squeeze it in. I see a question about the uh, the chapters for the exam. So our exam, our exam covers chapter eleven, and then this last chapter we dealt with, which is solutions. It's either chapter 12 or 13, depending on which edition of the book you have. If you have the fourth edition, it's chapter 13. If you have the third edition, it is chapter 12. But either way, it's whatever chapter covers intermolecular forces. So just two chapters on our last exam. Um, so Monday's a holiday. Wednesday is the exam. And then the next time I see you will be for the review. And then the day after that will be the final. So that's what we have coming up for the uh, rest of the semester.